So I'm Madhu Krishnan or Madhu Krishnan, depending on uh, your linguistic ability. It's actually Madhu. Um, I'm a professor of African world and comparative literatures at the University of Bristol in the United Kingdom. I've been at Bristol since 2013. My work really focuses on African literature and literary ecologies. My interest is thinking about the actually existing literary ecologies that persist in many different African countries. So I work in English and I work in French. I'm learning Kiswahili, so also starting to work in that. So I was very, very fortunate in, uh, at the end of 2019 to receive a very generous grant from the European Research Council. So it's called a starting grant and it's for five years of funding and it was for a project that is called Literary Activism in Africa, uh, Commons, Publics and Networks of Practice. So on this project, we're trying to think about the ecologies and ecosystems of literary activism in Kenya, in Uganda, in Cote d'Ivoire, in Nigeria and in Cameroon. So I'm directing the project but I have three postdoctoral research associates who work with me, Dr. Dosalin Kiguru, uh, Dr. Georgina Collins, and Dr. Dima Chami. And we also have an administrator, Ms. Laura McLean. And what we're trying to do is in each place, we're kind of trying to get a sense of what is literary activism in these contexts. So our, our interests are kind of threefold. Number one is, what do we mean when we talk about literary activism? How is participation in literature and literary activities a mode of activism? Secondly, how can literature be a part of the larger sociality? So what does participation in literature do when we think about participating in civic life? Um, what kinds of publics does it make? What kind of audiences? What kind of commons? The third thing we're trying to do is to document and archive because, you know, there's this old chestnut that nobody reads in Africa and there's no literary outlets, but that's coming from a place of ignorance. It's because there's not that much archival work or documentation. So we want to try to archive the work that people are doing right now to make sure that for future generations and future scholars, we understand how vibrant the literary communities have been. So language is super important and translation is really important. So one thing that we know for a fact is there are very few infrastructures on the African continent to support literary translation quite specifically. There's a lot around kind of scientific and industrial translation, but very little around literary translation, right? Because that's quite separate, it's different, it's an art. The problem with this then is the majority of African literature that is translated is translated by people who live and work in the global north. Now, it's not to say that a British person or an American can't translate an African novel, but you miss something, right? It's about autonomy, it's about cultural competence. And so it's very important, I think, to develop infrastructures and training and networks and peer-to-peer -peer support to support literary translation and multilingualism. I would also say, do you know, um, multilingualism is a fact of life in most of the world. Um, my family is from India. For us, it's a fact of life. For most Africans, it's a fact of life. You know, you rarely meet a person from the South who doesn't speak three, four, five, six languages. Um, and I think it's really important because so much literary theory is developed from Europe where monolingualism is the norm. But in the world, that's not the norm. Most people in the world are not monolingual. And I think we really fail to understand what language is and how it works if we don't listen. I think that there's very little space in academia for that kind of experimentation and that kind of work. Um, so it's one of the things where, you know, so myself, my colleague Ruth Bush, a few of my other colleagues, like we're really working to try to make space for that to happen. I mean, if you look, um, at academic departments, they're overwhelmingly weighted towards European languages. And in a sense, it makes sense, but I think, you know, you come here to Kenya and like, so much of it is still mediated by the colonial history and the colonial past. So I think it's our job as academics now to try to change that. I think it's really bright. I think that there's a lot happening right now 
that is going to really center translation in African languages. Um, I know, for example, um, Cassava Republic Press, based in Abuja, Nigeria, are now starting to do a translation side. There's a lot of people who are working on it. Bakwa Books in Cameroon is doing a lot around translation and lingua franca. I think that the future is really, really bright. It's been so fun. I love it. It's great. Um, I can't say I'm very good at it. I will say, Ninataka Kusoma Kiswahili. Um, it's an enjoyable thing, and I think that you just learn so much when you learn a language. I mean, I grew up multilingual. I speak six or seven languages myself, but every language you speak, you learn this whole different part of yourself and this whole different part of culture. So I, I think it's really important. One thing I feel very strongly about that I tell all of my PhD students is I don't think you can be a scholar of African literature without knowing an African language. I think you must, whether it's Kiswahili or Gikuyu or Wolof or Isi Zulu, like it doesn't matter, but you need to learn the languages of the place you're studying. Well, I'd say that's why we need translation because languages don't have to divide us, they can unite us, but we need to have translation. And we need to understand that, you know, me speaking my language or you speaking your language, it's not, a, it's not an attack on every other language. It's not saying this. Like, you hear the story that, you know, oh, English, we have to use English because it divides, it, it unites people as opposed to dividing with tribal languages. But what does that even mean? English is a tribal language. English is a tribal language. Come to the UK. There's Welsh speakers. There's Scots speakers. Even with English, there's different dialects of it. You know, I'm American and I'm British. Those are two very different Englishes. So I think we need to stop this kind of thing. And I think we need to focus on infrastructure for translation and for building bridges, because language does not have to divide us, it can unite us.